Greetings, my love. So today I'm going to show you how to clean your copper jewelry with lemon juice and warm water. Really simple, um, not a hard task at all. All you need is, I like to use warm water. Um, it seems to work better for me. Some lemons, I prefer, prefer organic lemons, and whatever your copper jewelry is that you want to uh, freshen up. As some of you might already know, copper can uh, start to turn, but that's because it's pulling out the toxins from your body and the air and all of these other amazing things. Um, and so all you have to do is cleanse it to, you know, get it refreshed. So let me see if I can even show you a good example. This is a recent piece. So nice, pretty, bright, shiny, and eh, not so much, right? So I'm still gonna clean this one just because um, I've been with it this weekend and other people were trying it on and I just wanna cleanse other people's energies and whatever might have gotten into it off of it. So the first thing you're gonna do is start with your lemons, um, fresh squeezed lemons, not lemon juice that you would get from the store. You take them and you just squeeze all of the gray juices out. Um, normally I would use a glass bowl, but I just moved and I don't know where Shorty's at, so we're just gonna have to use a plastic bowl for today. And also I'm wearing a glove because I have eczema and I'm not in the mood to find out what kind of nicks and cuts I might possibly have on my hand from the lemons. You don't have to wear a glove. It's not gonna do anything to you. Um, lemons are natural and great. You'll be fine. But you can, especially, you know, maybe if you have OCD or something, you just don't like it in your hands dirty, wear a glove, take it off, and then there's nothing on your hands afterwards. So generally I'll squeeze like three or so lemons um, and if you happen to have your lemons in the fridge for a while and they don't seem to be um, squeezing or if they feel like a little bit stiff and hard, all you really have to do is just roll it, put a little elbow grease into it, roll it, roll it, roll it. It softens it up and also when you cut it and you squeeze it, it makes it so much easier to get all of the juice out and you don't have to like have extra grip strength just to to make it happen. Also, another thing, oh, haha, perfect, right on time. If you're wondering how you can tell the difference between organic lemons and regular lemons, um, organic produce starts with the number nine. So if you look on your sticker, I don't know if that's gonna focus for you guys, but if it has a number nine, it should be five numbers and it should start with the number nine. That's how you'll be able to tell that your produce is organic. If it starts with the number four, it is what they call um, conventional, which means it's grown however they feel like growing it. It could be subject to pesticides and um, GMOs and other funky things. But if it starts with a nine, it's supposed to be um, organic produce. And that's usually how you can tell. And that goes for all of your produce across the board. So whether you're buying grapes or apples or bananas or kiwis or mangoes, and I'm just sitting here in the name of every food I can think of while I'm up here squeezing all of these lemons. Um, if it starts with the number nine, then uh, you'll be able to get it as an organic product. So I'm gonna do two for now because I'm only doing um, a few rings. I don't have to do all three, but normally I would do three, especially if I'm doing a, a larger set. So you can see it made a good amount of juice just from squeezing those lemons. And then I add some water. I don't do a real science behind it, but I do like to make sure that there is still enough uh, lemon juice where it's not diluted uh, too much. I feel more lemon juice the faster it works for me. And I'm going to start with this one. I'm add a little bit more just so that it's coating the ring. Put that main one in there first. Get some other babies that I had in there. And you can do multiple pieces at once. It's not a one at a time kind of a process. And you just kind of start switching it around. It gets even fun. Matter of fact, I got my copper bracelet on. We could throw that in there too. And you start switching it around. And you'll slowly start to see, because it's the water is relatively translucent, you can start to see when it's um, starting to brighten up. And even the one that I showed you that was bright is getting like even brighter. So you can tell it is getting more of 
whatever might have gotten into it from the vending this weekend off of it. And even if you just let it sit for a few minutes, you don't have to, uh, the, the big kid in me likes switching it around and playing with it and just, but you can leave it for a few minutes, come back to it. And then you're good to go. Beautiful shine. Now I'm obviously, I'm doing this at my desk. Um, you don't have to be cute. You can do this in the kitchen where <laughs> the great source of water would be. Uh, but just you can see this is one of the rings. So beautiful, amazing, clear copper shine, right? And the ones that need more time, you just leave them in there longer. If they seem to be done and they are already back to that beautiful copper shine, you can take them out. You don't have to leave them. I'm going to obviously rinse all of these off with water, um, but for now I'm just going to dry them until I get back to the sink. Okay. Beaut. And that's all you really have to do. It's a really quick um, process. It, it doesn't take long at all. If your jewelry, oh, this is a good example. If you have jewelry that is attached to uh, gemstones, our favorite crystals, do not put crystals that end in ITE inside of any water-based solution. So that's your selenite, your malachite, your calcite, any, anything that ends in an ite uh, should not be put in water. So if you have, like this stone is carnelian, it doesn't do anything uh, to the stone when I put it in a water-based solution, it's perfectly fine. But if I was to put something like a malachite or selenite, it uh, can damage the, the properties of the crystal, and then it's not gonna do what it came here to do. It will no longer understand the assignment, and it will probably be really upset with you. So already, just in those few minutes that I was talking, you can see how the piece that I originally showed you that had the most um, muck and yuck going on is already starting to come back to its original beautiful crystal state. And you can see how it looks closer and more like the other one from earlier. And I'm going to leave it in there just for a few more minutes just because I wanted to get extra nice and pretty. And that's it. Easy, simple, right? And like I said, you take your glove off. No more mess. You're all done. Thanks so much for joining me for this. My name is Nay Marie of Adorned in Taji. We are here by our sponsor, Taji Mag, who has given us this sweatshirt. Use the code ADORN to save 15% on any apparel at tajimag.com.